All right, so hi everyone. My name is Tracy Flood, CEO and co-founder of Broad Street. Um, welcome to the workshop on creating a food access report on broadstreet.io. Um, for this workshop, essentially what we're going to be doing is a step-by-step, -step, starting with logging into Broad Street. Um, after that, we're going to create a custom area and then run a report for that custom area. And then we'll show you how to edit that report if you'd like. And then finally, how to share it. Um, the idea behind all of this is that it's easily shareable information. And so that'll be the final step. All right, uh, let's dive right in. All right, so if you're going to broadstreet.io, the very first thing you'll see is this sign up. Um, I did say I would start at the most basic uh, step here. And, uh, and so truly this is the, the first step is signing in. If you don't already have a membership, um, you can sign up here or you can sign in um, with your Google login. Um, in any case I do, so I'm just gonna sign in. All right, so once you sign in, um, you're going to find yourself on the Broad Street homepage. The Broad Street homepage has a few different things that kind of showcases where you can go on Broad Street. Um, so right now, what you're seeing right here are these wizard cards, these little short squatty cards um, with pictures in them essentially leads you into um, a report creating wizard and each and every one of these represents a template. Um, this one's blank. We also have some tool cards here where you can browse indicators in our data dictionary, um, or you can even go to our map room to create a multi-layered map of your region and the indicators that interest you the most. I'm gonna go back up to here to these tool cards um, where you can create reports via a wizard. And um, I'm gonna show you that I've favorited these. These are ones that I run quite frequently. And so I've actually favorited them. The entire site is built on cards and each card essentially has the ability to save and to share. Um, this comes in really handy later when we talk about data cards. Um, but I hope you can notice that the entire site is built upon cards. This is the home page. Um, there is also a map room and then there's also things along the left navigation where you can, for instance, have um, a collection of saved areas if you want to create a new saved area. Um, you can favorite cards as well. Um, I'll let my areas load. Um, I think I actually have quite a lot of them. Um, but essentially what you'll see is that each area has this, what we call an area tag and you can edit, um, you can edit the area really at any time and, um, and even update your reports that are associated with that region. All right, um, when the time comes to create different cards, you can also favorite them. Um, these are some of the cards that I've favorited and I'm just showcasing the fact that you can favorite cards here. Now, if I were to run a report or what we call a story because we use storyboards to lay it out, um, then that story becomes saved here. So here you can see all of the different stories or reports that I've run in the past. Um, and if I ever wanted to find them again, this is where I would look. And then finally here, I have some saved maps that I've made in the map room. You might notice that I've also saved them as cards. Um, and if I favorited this one, it would appear in my favorites. Um, and I can also share the different cards um, and we'll go over that in the very last step. Finally, the left navigation also has a searchable data dictionary and has the ability to ask questions. And we also have an associated learning center um, where you can um, get some answers to some frequently asked questions. All right, that's essentially how you navigate through the main pages of Broad Street. If you ever have a question and it's during business hours, you can also toggle on this help and, uh, and a little chat will appear here and you're able to essentially um, ask a question or get to the learning center. Um, and we hope that you find that useful as well. All right, so that's just a main tour of the basic of Broad Street's page. Um, let's go in and create a food access report. So I've saved it as a favorite here, but if you're logging into the first time, where you'll find it is here. All right, so as promised, um, this wizard card leads you into a wizard um, where I can either choose my saved areas, the ones that I've saved already, or I can generate a new area. When I'm generating a new area, I can choose from a zip code list, a county list, or a list of cities, villages, and towns, otherwise known as places. Um, essentially, uh, one thing that we really like to do um, is to, to let people know that they can combine different counties however they'd like. You can have counties that aren't even attached to each other geographically um, and, and then pull them together into one um, one major area. Um, for right now, I'm going to use my, my hometown here. I'm going to do a two county region. 
I'm going to generate this area. Now, when I generate the area, it does a couple of things. Um, it essentially takes this two county region and associates different zip codes and different places with it. Um, this is really important just in case some of the data that you're pulling in and aggregating within our Broad Street data engine. Um, so back behind all of these different reports is a very large data engine um, with hundreds of indicators. And every once in a while, there's an indicator that's only available by zip code. And when that happens, these will be the zip codes that we use. Every once in a while, although not very often, there's an indicator that's only available by place. And that's the case, we'll use these places. Um, luckily, there's lots of different data that are available at the county level, um, so we shouldn't have a problem there. I'm gonna click next. And what it's doing in the background is that it's generating this food access report. It's taking the counties of Waukesha and Milwaukee and it's pulling together that data, essentially doing the analysis for us. All right, so it says congrats. Um, I just wanna draw your attention to what's behind this pop-up here. Um, it, is the, um, it is the story editor. Um, with it, for every story, there's essentially two different sides of it. Uh, one side is the story editor. Uh, and the other side is the published story. So if I really wanted to, um, to change the words, the cards, I would definitely wanna be in the story editor. If I just wanted to share this right now, um, honestly, the easiest thing is just to view it as a published story. So right now I have what's going to be a published story. This has a shareable link that I can share with my collaborators really at any time. And what you'll see here is the basis of the food access report template. Um, this report was written to help communi communities to identify populations with high and low access to healthy foods. Um, it's really meant as a starting point. Um, if you have data in house, uh, we definitely can show you how to, to add that in. Um, and I'm going to say that the, the gist of this is really to save you some time with secondary data analysis. So you don't have to go all over the internet, finding different sources of data and analyzing it and pulling it together. We do use the county health rankings framework with the social determinants of health. So considering that um, possibly the definition of food insecurity is impacted by upstream factors like demographics or location or even um, conditions within the community. Um, and then also looking at downstream factors, things that are impacted um, by um, places where um, not everyone in the family has access to healthy foods um, like obesity and diabetes. So within that framework of looking at social determinants and also downstream determinants, um, that's where we pull in the food access report. What you're going to see are different data cards using um, sources of data from everything from um, American Community Survey to data from Feeding America, um, USDA, Food Access Research, um, and, and others. All right, so let's just start. This is the two county region. This is essentially the area of interest that we defined for this report. Um, you can see that obviously the city of Milwaukee has much more population than the county of Waukesha here. Um, and if I wanted to look at that a little bit closer, then I can click any of these cards and you'll see this wide card version. This wide card version um, is able to be zoomed in. Um, and most importantly, you're able to share um, or save any card uh, that you do. Um, I'll showcase that at the very, very end. All right, so any of these data cards is the same. And most of them do have interactive abilities. All right, nearby yet out of reach. Um, so here's where we pull in data from county health rankings and roadmaps, and then also um, from FARA, um, the USDA Food Atlas, Food Access Research Atlas. All right, so this is food deserts, um, the census tracts that are considered to be food deserts and um, the population itself. So the dots represent the number of people um, that have low access to a grocery store within this region. And even those do not have a vehicle and also no nearby grocery store. Whenever possible, we do like to pull in disparities. Um, so here we look at different um, disparities by income and you can see just based on total number and even the percent, um, food access by age. low food access by race and ethnicity. And then also just by race. So between these two cards, they've covered a lot of different um, racial and ethnic groups and hopefully you can get the numbers from there. All right. Here in this next section, we look at um, 
Feeding America data from people um, who are food insecure in this two county region as a percent of the total population, and then also children who are food insecure in this population. Um, also looking um, specifically at children um, and families, um, looking at the households receiving public assistance and SNAP, and then also the children who are eligible for free and reduced lunch. Um, the color of this lunch does change based on whether or not this number is lower than the US average. All right, as promised, we do um, look at social determinants as well. And um, because poverty is so interrelated with um, the ability to afford access um, to healthy food, um, we do also look at um, poverty rates and also um, um, racial and ethnic differences in poverty. If you were to see where um, there's some, uh, there are families living in poverty, um, this is the dot map that you would look at. All right, and then finally looking at things that are um, themselves impacted by a lifetime of possibly um, being unable to afford access to healthy food. Um, and that is diabetes and obesity. Um, here we provide these rates for this two county region. Um, and also mortality trends for both of these things. Um, comparing the community that we've described um, to Wisconsin um, as a state benchmark and then also the United States. And this is actually um, a map card um, that I believe will lead us to the map room where we can see um, the indicators in more detail. All right, so now we have been redirected from the published stories and now we're actually in the Broad Street map room. Um, and pretty soon the map will appear behind us that'll show um, essentially um, obesity and diabetes rates for this particular location. If I were to turn off this show my area only, it'll then show it for the rest of the United States. And as you can see, I can also adjust the transparency for the indicator of obesity um, or indeed for the, the indicator of diabetes. All right. All right, so going back to my stories. Um, let's take another look at that food access report. All right, so here is actually the, um, if you remember, we, we looked at the published version of this story. Um, this is what it looks like within the editor. Um, if you would like to make this look like your own, um, such as this one. So this is a great example from a community food bank um, in Pennsylvania, specifically Pittsburgh. Um, they've actually customized it. So they've customized the logo up here and also the image. Um, I want to say that pretty much everything within this report is fully customizable. Um, if you don't like one of these cards, you can always remove it um, and it'll disappear from the story. Um, never fear, you can always bring it back. Um, and uh, if I wanted to shuffle the cards around a little bit, you could. All right. And if I wanted to change this area, this um, description altogether, I definitely could. So right now this is boilerplate text. So that I could add custom text here um, that more describes this. Now, the moment I save this, it is available to share and anyone that you invite to that public link or that public story will be able to see the updates. I can also click here to change um, the image. All right, great. And I can go into settings and I can go into layout and look if I wanted to adjust um, either the story layout or if I wanted to adjust the colors and the brand, um, we could really brand it so that it looked like my own, including by changing the URL, the logo, and even the favicon in the tab. All right, so that's how you kind of can kind of make it your own. Um, if you're happy with the story and the way that it looks, I'm going to go back to viewing it. And I did say that you could share this with your collaborators. Um, you can share it on the story level. So right here, you can see that I've already customized it and you can see my custom text there behind me. Um, I can copy this link as a read only. Um, I can also invite collaborator, collaborators via email. Um, I can basically say I want to add a collaborator by sharing a private link or inviting via email. I'm um, similar to how you would share a Google Sheet um, or even a Dropbox or, or Box file. 
Um, so you can invite collaborators. Collaborators will have access to that little edit button um, and will be able to change um, and shuffle around the cards and change the text, same as you. Um, if you don't want people to have all of those uh, changeable accesses, um, you can always copy the link for the read only. Um, if there's a particular um, thing or um, data card within this that you find quite interesting and you want to share on the internet or uh, in a PowerPoint presentation, um, then you can always click on share. So yes, you can share the entire story. You can also share the individual card. So you can copy this link. Um, this is the link that'll lead people to the card within the story. And I can copy that link and share it with people. Um, or I can even save this card to another one of my stories. So if I wanted to add it to um, a, a different story that I had already created, I can do that as well. Um, also, if I wanted to share this, I have some other options too. I can download the image and, uh, and I can also, and this, it's a high resolution image that should look really great in PowerPoint or even Word documents if you're writing a report. I can even share it directly to Twitter. So right now, um, I already have authenticated my Twitter hookup with this Broad Street account. And if I wanted to right now, I could post this directly to social media. Um, and this is the way that it would look. This is how the image would look once it's posted. Um, and it will give people a link to the card itself. All right. So in summary, um, that is how you log in to Broad Street. Um, that is how you create a custom area and how you generate a report and how you can edit the report and then even share it. I will pause the screen share there and open it up for questions and I'll also pause the recording.